Hello, I'm Vladimir from Axler, and in this video we are going to see how to use the Axler local development to deploy your cross-chain application. The easiest way to get started with Axler is to use the Axler local general message passing examples repository. This repository consists of a set of examples that are run against our Axler local development tool that can spawn various EVM chains, fund them with tokens, handle over layers, deploy the Axler gateway and the gas service. Basically everything that you need to get started developing with Axler. In this video, we are going to run the interactive examples located in the examples web folder and called call contract with token. The project is a Next.js React project, so all you need to do is to follow the readme. Third, we are going to create a .env file based on the .env example here. Then we are going to install the dependencies with yarn. To test your cross-chain application, we are going to have to run it against our local environment. In order to test your cross-chain application, you need to have a local development environment started. The configuration for that script is in scripts and start local dev. We use our Axler local development environment to create two blockchains, Moonbeam and Avalanche, and give Avalanche some Axler USDC. Let's get back to the readme and start the local development environment. And you see that we have just created two networks, two blockchains. We have deployed the Axler gateway on Moonbeam, the Axler gas receiver, as well as the Axler wrapped USDC. The same is happening on the Avalanche network. The chain configuration can be found in the config local.json file. We also need to deploy our smart contracts. This example uses the general message passing call contract with token. That means that we call a smart contract function from chain A on chain B and pass some tokens along the way. We have two smart contracts, one that we will be calling on the source chain called the message sender, and we have another contract, one that will receive the call, the cross-chain call, called message receiver. The message sender needs to be aware of where the Axler gateway is on the source chain and where the Axler gas receiver smart contract is on the source chain. The gateway and the gas receiver needs to be initialized in the constructor. We also have a arbitrary send to many function. In this example, we are going to send an amount of a token, in this case USDC, to a list of addresses on the destination chain. And we indicate the destination chain and the destination address, which will be the smart contract that will be called by Axler and receive the tokens. All the Axler gateways map the supported tokens, so we can get the token address through the Axler gateway call token addresses and by providing the symbol. Then we need to approve the gateway to be able to spend our ERC20. We then encode the destination addresses in the payload with the ABI encode function that allows Axler to encode any arbitrary payload. In this case, we want to transfer a list of addresses. It could be a string, it could be anything that the ABI supports. If we pay the fees to Axler, Axler will call our destination contract on the destination chain. We don't have to do that, but then you'll have to call the gateway on the destination chain on your own. Since the function is payable, we can provide the native gas to the gas receiver contract. So our transaction is executed on the destination chain by Axler. We then need to call the gateway call contract with token general message passing function. On the destination chain, however, the contract that is going to be called by Axler network should implement the Axler executable interface. Since we are using call contract with token, we should implement execute with token function that is defined in the interface. The function is going to receive the source chain, the source address, the arbitrary payload that we encode on the source smart contract, and the token symbol along with the token amount that we want to transfer. Again, we call the gateway on the destination chain to get the token ERC20 address, and we distribute that amount among the destination addresses that were provided in the payload. 
In a nutshell, the message sender contract is going to be deployed on Avalanche, while the message receiver is going to be deployed on Moonbeam. Thus, we are going to use the general message passing to call a function from Avalanche to Moonbeam and pass some tokens along the way. Now let's come back to the readme and build our contracts. I'm going to open a terminal in parallel and run that command to build the smart contracts with hardhat. The contracts are now compiled and we can deploy them on the local development environment. It is worth noticing that upon deployment, the contract addresses will be updated in the, in the local.json file. So if we deploy it again, the addresses will change. Now the contract lives in our local development environment and we can start the Next.js application. The example will start on localhost 3000 and you can see that we have a card representing Avalanche and a card representing Moonbeam. And before running our demo, let's maybe go through the UI code to see what is really happening under the hood. If we navigate into the pages folder and go to index.tsx, we see that we have the Avalanche card here that I'm going to collapse and the um, Moonbeam card as a destination card. So when we will click on send, we will actually call the send to many function in the source chain on the smart contract. So, and this logic is here in the form on submit event, handle on submit and this is what is happening. We get the amount from the form, we set the loading indicator to true, and then we call send token to destination chain, which is a function in our utils file. Let's go through that file because it's basically the core of our logic. We first load the three contracts from the artifacts generated by a hard hat, so we can use the API. We have the gateway contract, message sender and message receiver contract ABI, as well as the ERC20. We then load the right configuration file based on whether we are running it in testnet or not. We select the Moonbeam chain and the Avalanche chain. We connect the providers, the Moonbeam provider and the Avalanche provider. We load the contracts thanks to the ethers.js library by providing the address, the ABI of the contract, and the wallet connected to a provider. We do that for the gateway, the source gateway and the destination gateway, as well as for the source contract, which will be message sender and the destination contract, which will be message receiver. The main function that we might want to look is this one, send token to destination chain. It will take an amount and the recipient addresses, which will be a array of strings that will receive the uh, USDC amount. For the gateway to transfer our tokens, we first need to approve the gateway to be able to do so. We first get the address of the Axler wrapped USDC contract. We then approve the source contract on the source chain to be able to transfer the amount of our tokens. Then we use the Axler query API from the Axler SDK that will allow us to get an estimate of how much gas we're supposed to pay for that transaction. This is done thanks to the estimate gas fee function. We provide the source chain, the destination chain, as well as the native token, so native cryptocurrency that we're going to use. We then call send to many on the source contract. So on Avalanche, we say that we want to transfer to Moonbeam. We specify the address of the contract that we want to call. We give the array of the addresses we want to transfer the token to and we provide the amount of tokens that we want to transfer. And since it's UDC, it has six decimals. We then have to provide the amount of gas that we want to pay. So our transaction is executed by the Axler network and we don't have to actually call the destination gateway ourselves. If we are on testnet, we are going to use the gas fee that we fetch from the API or we just use a a fixed number because the local environment does not care how much gas you pay. We then log the transaction hash and we pass that to the callback. And that's about it. Now let's go back to our application and execute it. Now we are going to create some recipients. Let's have three addresses and we are going to send to them 100 USDC. Once the transaction will be completed, 
you see that those 100 USDC has been equally divided between all the addresses as per our smart contract logic. So this example works on our Acceler local development, meaning on our computer. But what happens if we want to test it on our testnet? Let's go ahead and do it right now. We're going to stop the local development environment and stop the Nest.js application as well. To deploy on the testnet, it's just a matter of changing the RPCs. This repository has an info folder with the testnet.json file. Those contain our testnet gateways and get receivers as well as the testnet RPCs. All you need to do is to copy the content of that testnet.json and place it in the example web config testnet.json. <clears throat> you then need to deploy your contract, but on the testnet. To deploy on the testnet, we need to indicate our application that we actually want to target the testnet. To do that, you need to go to the .env and change the environment to testnet. Then all you need to do is to deploy the contract. Yarn contract deploy. This is going to take a bit of time since the deployment is happening on the testnet network. In our case, both contracts have been deployed on Moonbeam and on Avalanche. And our testnet.json config has been updated as well with those addresses. Now we can close it all and start the React application again. Now our application is connected to the testnet. We see that the balance is different and we are going to send to USDC to those two addresses. I'm going to open the console because I want to get the transaction hash that has been logged by our code. And this is a testnet version of the Axler scan. So it works with testnet. We're going to paste the transaction hash here. And we see that our transaction is actually being executed by Axler. We want to transfer to Axler USDC along with the call contract with token function from Avalanche to Moonbeam. And we are going to wait a bit until our transaction is approved. We now see that it took around two minutes to transfer your tokens from Avalanche to Moonbase, as long as to call a arbitrary function thanks to the general message passing. And if we come back to our UI, we see that the balances have been updated and we have successfully transferred to USDC from Avalanche to Moonbeam with the channel message passing. So we have seen that deploying to the testnet or even mainnet is actually a matter of changing some RPCs and some contract addresses in your configuration file. All it takes is a simple command to deploy your code to the network of your choice.